Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for tuning in this Monday. I'm Asia Gore. U.S. Senators reached a compromise this morning, paving the way to end the government shutdown as it entered its third day. The impasse has forced hundreds of thousands of non-essential government workers off the job. CBS's Mo Lange has more on this morning's negotiations. Going on still. Senators met again Monday morning to reach a deal to end the government shutdown. We're making progress by inches. We think it's absolutely critical that we reopen uh, government, and that's what we're, we're focused on right now. Senate Leader Mitch McConnell offered to fund the government until February 8th with a pledge to take up legislation addressing DACA, the program protecting young immigrants brought to the U.S. illegally as children, afterwards. Every day we spend arguing about keeping the lights on is another day we cannot spend negotiating DACA or defense spending. But Democrats want more than a pledge. We just need a commitment on that that's firm. The political stakes have intensified now that the shutdown has entered the work week and hundreds of thousands of federal workers have been forced off the job. In a tweet, President Trump accused Democrats of turning down services and security for citizens in favor of services and security for non-citizens. During the shutdown, national parks and landmarks are closed. They didn't pass the budget, so we were forced to close. And half the military's civilian workforce is furloughed. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Montana's U.S. Senators were on opposite sides of today's vote to reopen the federal government. The Senate voted 82 to 18 to allow a vote on the deal, which is expected to pass Congress and fund the government for another two and a half weeks. Republican Senator Steve Daines voted in favor, but Democratic Senator John Tester was among the 18 members who voted no, most of them Democrats. A spokesman for Tester says this morning the senator does not support another short-term deal that doesn't include funding for community health clinics or certainty for our military. All but two of the 18 no's were Democrats. The government shutdown left Yellowstone National Park visitors in an interesting predicament this weekend. The park was unattended, but visitors could still ride snowmobiles and ski in to check out the geysers and wildlife. Bozeman cross-country skier Carol Weaver says the trails were open for her and her friends, but she says she was unhappy with lawmakers. Visitor center, public toilets, and other facilities run by the National Park Service were closed, but privately operated hotels, tour services, and gift shops did remain open. A Missoula snowmobiler is dead after being buried by an avalanche near the Idaho-Montana state line. The avalanche was reported Saturday afternoon. Search and rescue crews responded to the area about 28 miles from West Yellowstone. Authorities say the body of 46-year-old Raymond Moe was found about 40 minutes later by members of his group. This is the second avalanche-related death in Fremont County, Idaho, within two weeks. Residents of the Flathead felt the rumble of an earthquake last night. The U.S. Geological Survey says the quake was a 3.0 magnitude. The quake north of Big Fork was centered between Kohler and Cabin Lakes. It was about six miles deep. There have been no reports of injury or damage. The same area felt a small earthquake just last week. And we turn now to the weather scene with Brett and how are we looking around the state today? Around the state we've got kind of a mixed bag right now as we uh, take a look at what is happening in Missoula right now. Currently they do have some uh, light snow falling there. They're at 30 degrees and their winds are calm. Let's head on over to uh, Great Falls, 37 degrees. They've got a little bit of sunshine poking through. Southwest winds at 16 miles an hour. And as we uh, head over to Helena, 26 degrees with uh, mostly cloudy skies. North winds right now at five miles an hour. And here in the Billings area, uh, we do have overcast skies right now. We started off with little sunshine this morning, 31 degrees. Southwest winds right now at 14 miles an hour. Uh, we're going to hold our temperatures of right around seasonal averages. We'll show you that in just a few minutes. Thanks, Brent. We'll check back in. A Bozeman stabbing victim remains hospitalized today after an assault on Friday. Police were called to the 3300 block of Warbler Way Friday night for a stabbing. Officers arrived to find one victim suffering life-threatening injuries. Officers have not yet located the suspect, who's described as an approximately six foot tall male with a slim build. Anyone with information should contact police. Two Yellowstone County Sheriff's deputies on administrative leave today after shooting and injuring a man in Lockwood. 
Around 6.30 a.m. Sunday, deputies were called to the 1900 block of Canary Avenue on a welfare check for a man who was reportedly suicidal. A press release states one deputy looked inside the home with his flashlight and was confronted by a man with a handgun. An unknown number of shots were fired and that man was hit. He was transported to a local hospital and is expected to survive. His identity has not been released. Detectives have now applied for a search warrant to search his residence. And according to the sheriff's office, the two deputies involved are Tyler Sennett, a one and a half year veteran, and Brendan Trujillo, who joined the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office in September of 2017 after six years of law enforcement experience with a different agency. Neither deputy was injured and both will remain on paid administrative leave per department protocol pending a review of the shooting. A jury in Great Falls will hear the details this afternoon of a deadly police shooting last summer. Officer Tad Kimmett and Officer Adam Sturgionis shot and killed Thomas Addison in September. Addison was reportedly trying to break into a home and ran away when officers arrived. The officers began chasing Addison. During that chase, police say Addison brandished a weapon. He was then shot and killed. The inquest will be held at the Civic Center. We now know the name of the woman killed in a crash north of Helena this weekend. The coroner Biller of Helena. Biller died Saturday on the gates of the mountains road near Interstate 15 when the vehicle she was driving left the roadway and rolled. The vehicle stopped when it hit a tree. Emergency crews performed CPR, but the woman still died at the scene. The crash remains under investigation. Switching gears, state emergency managers say they will not appeal the federal government's decision to deny Montana millions of dollars in additional aid related to the record 2017 wildfire season. State leaders asked the Trump administration to declare a major disaster in Montana, which would have given the state access to $44 million in federal aid. But FEMA leaders denied the request, saying the damage wasn't severe enough to qualify. State leaders say they want to look at possible changes to the way disasters are declared, which could make them more applicable to Montana. We did not qualify for a major disaster declaration, and I think what we need to do in our downtime in between busy fire seasons is to ask ourselves why. Why isn't that hazard uh, really included in the, the national conversation? Montana leaders say they had planned to use FEMA aid dollars to replenish the state's depleted fire fund. Before we get to break, the most recent influenza report shows flu-related deaths in Montana are on the rise. The Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services released its report Friday showing 18 people have died related to the flu season. All but two victims are adults over the age of 65. Statewide, 304 people have been hospitalized because of the flu. The counties with the most confirmed cases last week were Flathead County with 89 confirmed cases, Lewis and Clark County with 59, and Cascade County with 41 cases. Straight ahead on the new news, the Transportation Security Administration puts new security guidelines in place. We'll tell you which countries are impacted. But first, Brett has our weather forecast. Stay tuned. You're watching MTN News with Asia Gore. Storm Trekker weather with Ed McIntosh. And farm and ranch news from the Northern Egg Network. This is the new.